let's look at some examples of using list in Python. I mentioned in the previous video that list of numbers are great for being able to do a quick total of all those numbers or finding the average. So just to demonstrate that, we're going to create a list called numbers and I'm just going to assign it some random numbers here that I'm typing in. And I want to find out what the total is of those numbers and what the average is. So I'm going to create a variable called total. I'm going to set it equal to zero. Then we're going to create a, lo a, a loop for i in numbers. And what I'm going to do in that loop is simply take total and we're going to increment it by the value of i. So the first time through the loop, i is going to be 5, next time it's 7, next time is 18, next time is 20, and so forth. Now I can print the value of total. And total is 119. And if you'd like to pull out a calculator and, and type in those numbers and verify that that's correct, you're welcome to do so. But let's find the average of that now. So I'm going to say average equals total. And I want to divide total by the number of elements that are in numbers. But that could change over time. Maybe I want to add another number in or take one away. So let's divide that by the length of numbers. And then I can print average. And the average is 11.9. Let's take a look at some projects we've done in the past that actually we can make it a little bit easier uh, using list. You might remember our Powerball project from uh, the video a few weeks ago where we found five numbers between 1 and 69 at random with no duplicates and a Powerball number between 1 and 26 and we could generate between 1 and 25 tickets. And just let me run this to remind you what it looked like when we ran. So I'm asked how many tickets I want. I'm going to say 15 and it generates 15 pick tickets from A through O and I get my five numbers and my Powerball in the five numbers between 1 and 69 with no duplicates on any single ticket. Let's look at how we can do this using list. So here's my program rewritten using a list and in both cases I import random and then a variable called how many equals zero that's equivalent to the num tickets that I used over here. So I'm going to ask them how many ticks they want to generate and I'm going to do that in a loop as long as how many is less than one or greater than 25. In our previous program, I just simply set num tickets equal to 25 if it was greater than 25. But to generate those 25 tickets, I'm gonna use a for loop, just like we did over here. So for i in range, zero comma how many? So this for loop will generate one ticket at a time. Each time I generate a ticket, I'm gonna set my numbers as a list equal to five zeros. And then I'll use a loop for j in range 0 to 5. That's going to be these five different elements. So it's going to go from 0 to 4 inclusive. I'm going to set a variable called next num equals random.randint, 1, 69. So generating a number between 1 and 69 inclusive. But while my numbers dot count next num, whatever number it came up with, is greater than 0, meaning I've already used that number because I'm going to store whatever number I generate in each of these elements. I'm going to regenerate that number again. So to generate the five different elements, make sure there's no duplicates. That's my code versus this code over here using our while loop where we might have a very scary complex Boolean expression. And if I wanted to have this generate 10 numbers, all I would do is add a bunch more zeros here in my numbers and change this value of 5 to 10. Okay, so once it finds a number, we're going to set my numbers element j, so the first one's going to be this one here, to whatever number we, we generate. Let's say we generate a 5. And then the next time we generate another 5 here, but my numbers.count of 5 would be greater than 0. It would be a 1 and we generate a number again, a new number. So that will generate my five different numbers versus over here, we generated our five different numbers. Much shorter code, more efficient, 
and more extensible in that I can easily adjust the number of numbers I want to create. Now, here's something we didn't do in the other program, and that was to sort my numbers. It would have been pretty difficult to sort those five numbers um, without using a list. It would add a lot of lines of code. But it's really simple using list. All I do is call the sort method of my list. I'm going to get rid of this print numbers because that was just a little test that I did. And then we generate the Powerball between 1 and 26. And then I'll print that all out with formatted, uh, with formatted string. And then finally, I'll print the string good luck. So let's run this. I want to save. And it's asking me how many chances I want or how many tickets I'd like to have. Again, I'm just going to do 15. And there are my 15 tickets labeled A through O. And notice that my five numbers are all in order from lowest to highest. And then also show the Powerball. There are no duplicates. And the range goes from 1 to 69, although I didn't get a 1 that time. Let's just verify we actually do get a run. I'm going to run it again. And this time I'll do 20 tickets. And there I got a 1. So I'm getting a 1. I'm also getting a 69 and all the numbers in between. And if you look through this list very carefully, you should see no duplicates on any one ticket. Now, the same number may come up on multiple tickets, but in one ticket there'd be no duplicates. So I invite you to pause this video and go ahead and type in this code and create a lot of picker using the list. And as you're typing in the code, think about what you're typing in. Think about the process that this project is going through and play the part of the computer as you're typing it in, processing the values. Previously, you had an Olympic judging assignment in which we used sequential if structures to find the high and low judges out of seven values. The program looks something like this. We entered values for seven different nations for the judges of those nations in an Olympic event. And then upon the entry of the last one, it displayed the results of what the lowest score of those seven was, what the highest score was, and which countries those came from. And then the average score of the middle five judges. So we're excluding the low judge and the high judge, and taking the average of the five left. Well, we can do that with list. And so here's the same program written as a list, much shorter. And what I did was I created a list of the nation names, and then I created a list for scores, which currently is empty. So you can create an empty list just with square brackets. And then we get the input for each of those judges from the different seven nations. And so I have a loop here for country in nations. So I'm going to go through each item of nations. And we're going to display enter judges score from and whatever the name of that nation was. And I set a field of 14. So these would all line up nicely. I could have done that with spaces in the earlier program. And then I'm going to append the value that's entered, which is a float value. I'm converting it to a float. Storing it in a temporary variable called judge. I'm going to append that value of judge to my scores list. So since these are going to be done in order from China, France, Germany, so forth to Zimbabwe, the scores will be in that same order as we're appending them. Then I need to find the high, low, and the average. So the high score is going to equal the low score. It's going to equal scores sub zero. So I'm sending China's score to both the high and the low. And again, if China was our only country, it would be the high score and it'd be the low score. And then I'm going to set the high judge and the low judge equal to nations element zero, which would be China. Total scores equal zero. And then I have a for loop, which I have a variable called IDX for index. This is going to be a number. And the number is going to be in the range of the length of nations. In case I wanted to change nations from 7 to 10, even 20, I don't have to change anything here. So it's going to be whatever, however many nations there are. Same with this for loop up here. Since we're going through nations, we would get the judge scores for all those nations. So this range is basically going to be from 0 to the number of nations minus 1 would be inclusive. The length of the, of the nations list would be exclusive. I'm going to increase total scores by scores element IDX. I'm going to set the low judge equal to nations IDX if 
the score's IDX, the score of that particular nation, is less than low score. Otherwise, you'll leave it as low judge. Then do the same thing for low score. Now, I want to set the judge before I do the score, because if I set the low score, then this would not be a true statement, and the judges would not align correctly. So you want to make sure you do the judges first, and then the scores, because the, sco the low score is changing. Same with the high judge and the high score. Here I checked to see if scores element IDX is greater than high score. Again, doing the high judge before I do the high score. And that's gonna help me find the low judge and the low score and the high judge and the high score for all my nations. Again, it wouldn't matter for their seven or if I increase that to 30. And then the average score is gonna be the total scores, which is all seven minus the high score minus the low score. Add those together. And I'm gonna divide that by the length of scores minus two. So the length of scores currently would be seven. There's seven elements minus two would give me the five because I'm throwing out the high score and the low score. And then finally, I simply output the results of the lowest score, what that score is and, and which nation it's from, and the highest score, what that score is, which nation it's from, and then the average score, which I'm gonna format to two decimal places. Let's watch this run. Okay, so that's me for the score for China. We put in 7.6, and we'll do a 7.4 and a 7.8, 7.5. We'll make Sweden the lowest at 7.2, and the US the highest at 7.9, and then a 7.7 .7 for Zimbabwe. So I've kind of done this so that 7.6 is going to be my average score of the five middle ones. So I've gone 0.2 below and 0.2 high, 0.1 below and 0.1 high, and then these are the two that are getting thrown out. So 7.6 should be our average with 7.2 from Sweden being the lowest and 7.9 from the United States being the highest. And that's what we get. When we examined the random number generator, we imported the random statement and we created a dice roller in which we had die one equals random dot rand int one comma six, and this is a number between one and six randomly. Same with die two, we added those together for a roll, and then we simply showed what we rolled, the two different dice and the total. And here's when we ran that program, we got you rolled a four and a one for a total of five. What I really want though is to be able to show the words rather than the numbers. So rather than, uh, the number four and one, here I'm showing the number six and four for a total of 10. Now we could use a if, elif, else structure to take the number and assign a word for that value and use that in our output. But we can actually do it much easier using a list. Let's take a look at that code. So here I took the previous program and I assigned though a list called dice values with the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And those are all strings, so it's a, a list of strings. The 0 we're actually never going to use, but because we start counting with element 0, I needed to have something there. It makes sense to put a 0. We'll never see that come up. Again, I'm going to randomly assign a value to die 1 and die 2 between 1 and 6, get my total. I commented out the, the previous print statement where I was printing the numbers. But now I'm gonna say you rolled a placeholder zero place, and a placeholder one for a total of placeholder two. And those placeholder values, the first one's gonna be dice values, element die one, whatever I generate there. And I'm gonna invert this to uppercase, do the same thing for die two uppercase, and the same thing for my roll total as being uppercase. And again, if I run this, I'm getting now I rolled a four and a six for a total of 10. Let me run it one more time. And here I got a four and a three for a total of seven. So that's how you can use a list to assign word values to various numbers. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.